Poison ivy is able to emit pheromones. It's a chemical substance that can travel through the air and affect the behavior of others. She uses these pheromones to seduce and manipulate her opponents. But fortunately, things like that are only found in comic books. This Valentine's Day, you don't have to worry about women subconsciously controlling you with their irresistible aromas. Or do you? I'm Rusty Ward and this is Science Friction, where I break down the real science of sci-fi and comic book superpowers and tell you how to become superhuman at getting laid. Not really. That's not exactly my area of expertise. But I am going to break down the power of pheromones. In comics, pheromones aren't just used by Poison Ivy, but also Spider-Woman, Wolverine's son Dokken, and my personal favorite, Mandrill. Mandrill is basically a wear mandrill that the ladies can't get enough of. He uses his pheromones to create all female armies he calls the Femme Force. Pheromones aren't just in comics, they're all around us. They're used by animals, plants, and even bacteria. Scientists have proven that they have incredibly powerful effects upon animals. Female silk moths secrete a pheromone that's capable of traveling for miles. If just a few molecules find their way to a male silk moth, he immediately turns and flies directly towards her. And if a female boar picks up the scent of androstenone, a pheromone found in the saliva of male boars, she walks on over to him and presents her hindside. It basically causes boar twerking. It's so effective, it's been bottled and sold as boar mate. I highly recommend it if you need a lot of boars. Human reactions are more complicated though. The main pheromone sensory organ in most animals is the vomeronasal organ. It's located in the stem of the nose, but it's separate from the olfactory organs that we normally associate with sense of smell. Humans don't have a functioning vomeronasal organ. Some of us have something in our nose that looks like it once was the vomeronasal organ millions of years ago, but it stopped working for some reason. George Zhang at the University of Michigan believed that this happened after the development of color vision. Our primate cousins are able to tell if a female is ready to mate based upon the discoloration or swelling of her skin. He believes this proved more effective than scent detection for our ancestors. So over the generations, our vomeronasal organ wilted away. This brought into question whether humans can use or detect pheromones at all. But it was later discovered that although the vomeronasal organ excels at detecting pheromones, it's not the only organ that can do so. Studies have shown that the normal olfactory system can detect them too. We can't consciously smell pheromones, but PET brain scans show that blood flow increases through the hypothalamus when women inhale testosterone and men inhale estrogen. And there have been a number of studies that show the myriad effects pheromones can have on humans. A lot of these studies involve putting armpit sweat on a woman's upper lip. In medical circles, they call it underarm extract. But let's get real here. It's pit juice. Applying one woman's armpit sweat to another woman's upper lip alters her menstrual cycle. Applying a man's armpit sweat to a woman's upper lip causes relaxation and induces the release of hormones that affect ovulation. Another study shows that when men smell women's tears, their sexual arousal and testosterone levels drop. This happens even when they're smelling the tears from a vial and have no idea what the substance is. And it's been found that childless women experience sexual arousal when they're exposed to the odors of a mother breastfeeding her child. Pheromones also allow us to detect genetic differences in possible mates. This was shown by Swiss biologist Klaus Wedekind in his sweaty t-shirt study. This is where a guy wears the same t-shirt for two nights in a row. Then the shirt is balled up and thrown in a plastic bag. Women going only on the smell of the shirt, significantly preferred the scent of men whose immune systems were genetically different from their own. If two people have different immune systems, then their children will be more resistant to disease. So it's believed that this mechanism evolved to prevent inbreeding and produce healthier offspring. So we know that our pheromones can influence members of the same and opposite sex, but scientists have yet to pin down exactly what chemical or combination of chemicals will instigate a desired response. What constitutes pheromones is a very complex mixture of different substances. 
it's not just spraying a room with testosterone or estrogen. But this is a relatively new field. We've only begun to decipher this language. There may come a day when you'll be able to command your own fem force or dude force, depending on your preference. On the next Science Friction, we're gonna take a look at the darker side of pheromones, those that create alarm and anxiety. That's right, I'm gonna show you how to induce fear. Thanks for watching, subscribe for future episodes, check out some of the previous ones, hit up the Science Friction Facebook page to see a list of my favorite comic book femme fatales, and tell me what superpower you want.